This video is brought to you from the folks at Emotiva. Maybe it's time to rethink high end. Hey, I'm Andrew Gash with Audioholics, and this is the new Minx XI digital music system from Cambridge Audio. It's kind of a hopped up high-end streaming media player that'll let you play just about any music source imaginable. It's built on Cambridge Audio's popular NP30 platform and shares a lot of the same controls and features, but it adds a 40-watt stereo amplifier to make this a small integrated amplifier on steroids, basically. Integrated amp network music streaming device the terminology is tough because it does almost everything. I think we'll stick to calling it what Cambridge recommends, and uh, that is a digital music system. Now, the Cambridge Audio's Minx XI seems to be designed to play just about everything and anything you may have in your collection, and to do it with an impressive level of quality. The XI can stream music via Bluetooth or the internet, uh, listen to a bunch of streaming services, including, of course, Spotify, Pandora, Rhapsody, and you can even connect it to your home network to stream lossless files. And there are two available USB ports for audio that you might keep on an external storage device. And if all of that is in a enough, two pairs of analog stereo RCA inputs are provided along with both optical and coaxial SPDIF inputs. Lastly, a subwoofer line level out means you can connect a sub to sweeten the output from your speakers. On the front is a four-line digital display that gives you a lot of information. A USB port as well uh, is on the front, and there's, of course, one on the back, and a large select knob that quickly scrolls through the information on the front display, and you can push the knob in and select items. It's also a multifunction knob in that it also doubles as the volume control. Now, the back of the unit has all the inputs that I already talked about, but it also has a BT100 Bluetooth USB adapter, which is included, and a Wi-Fi antenna that connects via another USB port, and neither of those interfere with the rear USB port available for music. The Bluetooth system supports aptX, which delivers near lossless quality to the player, and the binding posts are of notable quality and are not the cheap plastic style found on a lot of similar products. They're actually removable completely to allow for rear insertion banana connectors, which is an unusual but effective solution for a product that also is sold overseas. Now, Wi-Fi setup was a breeze, of course, because the four-line digital interface throws up all the letters and numbers in alphabetical order, and you can uh, just cursor around and select the password that you uh, need. This is way easier than a system that uh, forces you to scroll through 70 letters and numbers and characters in every position. You've done that before, right? It's a pain. Also, instead of forcing you to use the remote, you can log in to streammagic.com and set up an account to link your player to your streaming media accounts like Rhapsody, uh, Pandora, Sirius XM, and others. Now, for listening tests, I opted to go with a complete Cambridge Audio setup. For speakers, I grabbed these, which is a pair of the Aero 2s. They run around $500 a pair and come in either black or a dark walnut veneer. And it's not really that fancy. In fact, the speakers to me are kind of vanilla-ish, you know what I mean? Boxed corners, rubberized front firing port. The driver complement is also unusual in that the Aero 2 uses a system called BMR, and it stands for Balanced Mode Radiator. Instead of a traditional tweeter, the Aero 2 and other Aero speakers, and the line for that matter, use a flat radiating driver that measures just over one and three quarter inches across its center. Now the BMR can playback frequencies down to roughly 250 hertz. And now that's far lower than conventional tweeters that drop out around 2.5 kilohertz. This frees up the woofer to handle the really low frequencies. The problem, however, is that the highs end up being rather bright and sibilant and the mids are overwhelming on such a small radiator. On top of that, I saw a little benefit for the woofers because the bass came across as neither tight nor punchy. Actually, the 40 hertz low frequency response spec for the Aero 2s seems to be a bit off, and my own testing showed the lower response to be closer to 50 hertz. Cambridge Audio does make the Aero 9 subwoofer, which helps considerably when running a full system. Overall, I'd have to say that I really enjoyed the capabilities of the Minx XI, but I can't recommend the Aero 2 speakers. Now, I, I, I just feel that there are 
too many great options out there for $500 a pair. Don't get me wrong, I mean, you'll enjoy the sound, they image well, the sweet spot is very wide, but I just think that you can do better for the money. So that brings me to the question of the week, which is who do you think makes the best $500 pair of speakers? Let us know below in the comments and subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help us bring you more video reviews. Also, while you're out there on internet land, make sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash audioholics because we put up a lot of info there and you don't want to miss one bit of it.